Hello, good evening, and welcome to PM Express. My name is Nana Ansakwa. Recently, much has been heard about Tema Shipyard. The history of the shipyard, which was first put up for sale in 1991 and placed on the divestiture list for almost six years before the then president, Rollins approved of this sale on the 15th of August, 1996, has been a sad and troubling one. Analysts and experts have concluded that the 13 years of the management as a majority shareholder by Penan Shipping, uh, shipbuilding and construction were the worst years in the history of the once reputable ship, shipping and dry dock company of Ghana. Government over the years have expressed concern over the management of the Tema shipyard, forcing it to enter the renegotiation exercise with the Malaysian company to retrieve its shares. There have been calls on government to hand over the management and operation of the facility to the Ghana Port and Harbour Authority, uh, whose officials had in, 19, uh, in 2012 paid out the 6.36 million bailout package to the previous Malaysian managers that enabled the government to repossess the facility after 16 years. But news making rounds indicates that Tano Oil will be government's partner of choice. Should we really hand over the Tema ship yeah, to Tolu? Uh, we only just got it back from Malaysia. What are government's plans for the shipyard and why are there so many calls for it to remain in the hands of GHPA when they say despite shelling out the huge amount of money, they were not sidelined in the deal? We've got the General Secretary, Maritime and Dock Workers Union, Daniel Usukranting, in the studio to tell us what the uh, permutations is. We'll, we also listen to what the Minister for Transport had to say on the issue during her meeting with the press this morning. And the discussion will be incomplete without digging into uh, the PSC Tema Shipyard Committee report. So we will talk to the Chairman of the Committee, Chris Akumi, who will join us on the phone later. But in studio with me is uh, Daniel Osukranti, General Secretary, Maritime Doc uh, and Doc Workers Union. Uh, good evening and welcome. Thank you. Now, this is such a complicated story. So I just want us to find, you know, just go a little bit, we do a bit of history uh, of how the dock began, uh, its advantageous position su situated, and everything. When, when, did, when was it built, this, this dock? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we, we need to um, look, look at the whole discussion in a certain historical context. Mm -hmm. um, in 1960, when the Tema Harbor was being built, Osajifu Dr. Dr. Karim Kumo, who is the founding father of this nation, thought it wise that we should have a shipbuilding kind of company to um, kind of contribute to the economic development in the, in the maritime industry. Mm -hmm. So it was part and parcel of the shipbuilding process of the Tema um, Habo. So we, we, we always want to believe that if we talk about the Tema Habo, then the shipbuilding or the shipyard is part of the vision of Ostanjifu Dr. Kwame, Kwame Nkrumah. Okay. So that, is, that, is, that is how uh, it started. And let me also mention that, so at that time, it was um, very prudent to have the authority that was managing the port and the company, the shipyard, to be the same company. You know? So it was one and the same okay. company. Yeah. And then got separated later? Got separated later, uh, somewhere along the line. And then, um, even when it got separated, it came under the, the management of Ghanaians. And um, as the history ha you know, um, had it, that the period when Ghanaians, like people like um, Commander Duvlo and uh, Vice Admiral, I think Usuansa, um, I, we, we can recall that some of us, uh, when I joined the Maritime and Dock Workers Union, so, some of them were still playing their roles. And that was a period when the workers felt that they were part of a company and the, the place was well managed. 
you know, even before the Malaysians uh, took over. So, I mean, uh, then I'll start with, so why, why was it sold? Why was it put on the divestiture if it was working? Yes, I think with, within that period, there was the, the strong feeling that um, government did not have much business in doing business. Okay. So it was important that um, private um, sector, which we always think is the um, engine of, of, of growth of, or what runs business, should be allowed to play key roles. So even some companies that were being run well, and because of the thinking that, okay, governments should create the environment for business, but not to do business. Um, that was the thinking. So in some of the cases, then government had to pull out. And then the Malaysians came in. And we must also understand that that was a period when the, you know, the IMF and the World Bank, who were driving that ideology, um, actually had it as part of their program to ensure that government, as much as possible, government withdrew from from business and allowed um, foreign partners um, to, to come in. And that government duty was to create the fiscal regime, the policy framework to ensure that business thrived. You know, that was the thinking at that time. So the, it was one of the reasons why um, the shipyard actually went to the Malaysians. And on the basis of South to South cooperation. Was it any benefit to us at all? For some of us, we think that if there's, uh, there, was, there were any benefits at all, the, the benefits lie in the fact that we should learn that uh, we need to manage our, 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 our companies ourselves. You know, if there were any lessons to be learned. So, be, no, because the whole period of the Malaysian administration had been the worst, as you stated in your mm -hmm. um, preliminary comments, had been the worst in the, in the life of um, the Tema Shipyard. And um, we, some of us have gone into some of the, the, the things that happened. But you ask yourself why we could sit down for this thing to go on for 15 years. So let, me, let, uh, me come in, let me come in here. See, we have a history. I mean, I use Vodafone, for instance. You know, once upon a time, Ghana Telecom couldn't seem to make any profit until it becomes Vodafone. The layoff, you know, two thirds of the workers, suddenly they are a booming company. So somehow we have this track record of running our own institutions down and then we bring in uh, foreigners and then they run it up. But then they, obviously they take the profits away. Could, could the uh, dry dock have been in a similar state? No, as, as I indicated, um, it was clear that when some individuals, some Ghanaians were running the place, the, the place was doing very well. They were, we, we didn't have much um, workers' agitation, mm -hmm. and people felt that the, you know, the, the, the dry dock was, was a very good company. And the thinking that actually um, was a driving force for the sale, as I indicated, was this whole thinking that government must withdraw from a lot, a lot of the businesses that we had, we had interest in. But the, the period when the Malaysians took over, um, some of us think that even though the Malaysians actually did not do well, we think that some of the blame should also go to our, our regulatory institutions, our, the institutions that have oversight responsibility to ensure that even when we provide the opportunity for foreigners to engage in, in business here, they must ensure that even the very agreement that we have, they must ensure that they, they, they stick to the tenets of the agreement. In the case of the Malaysians, you see clearly that they were allowed to do anything. They went against the tenets of the, the, the very you know, joint venture agreements. Mm -hmm. Clearly, they were able to even, somewhere along the line in 2007, they were able to even sell the, 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 the majority shares that they were owning to another company, Boss busted and, and nobody was talking about it. You know, sometimes it, it, it was as if nobody even knew. They were able to set up companies that were, that were subcontracting um, some of the operations of, of, before, of, before, of, before of, of to shipyard that, yeah. to their own companies. The, the agreement was that the Malaysians were going to bring in money 
and equip the place to, you know, the modern standards at the time uh, and run it. Did they put in that money? Um, we, no, no. I think, I think they didn't put in that money. They could not inject the necessary capital to, to revamp the place. <laughs> if, to the extent that even the, the machinery and plants, if you read the Chris Akumi report, mm -hmm. clearly the machines and plants uh, machines and plants that were existing. Some of them were scrapped. So you, you could see that even the things that they came to me, they couldn't even take good, good care, care of, of, of them. You know. So we, we, we need to draw very useful lessons. So then you know. how, how were they maintaining their 60% of, 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 the, of the deal? Because here we are, they haven't put in money. Uh, and even the infrastructure that they've came to me, they are not able to keep it. So how are they keeping their 60% of the bargain? And that is why I, I have said earlier on that it is, it is not as if the Malaysians were, were that bad, but it also shows a failure of regulation and oversight responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because if we have spelled out a few things in a joint venture agreement, and then they are supposed to do some things, who has the responsibility to ensure that they, they meet all these um, um, requirements and then what? and what have been put in, in the joint venture agreement. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to do it. And that calls for strong institutions. And probably that is why some of us are afraid now. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we have a feeling that this is a nation that doesn't learn. Because we, we keep repeating the same mistakes. And when that happens, then we are rather creating a generational you know, burden for um, the, the next generation. Mm -hmm. and Clearly, for example, what we are discussing now, the bone of contention between us and, 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 and public government now, is all about what preparations have been made to ensure that whatever future plan that we have for, for shipyard, we, it is done within a certain management structure. I agree with you, but there's something that, as you just said, has just drawn my attention, that if indeed we went into an agreement and I got the... Uh, uh, you know, a copy of the uh, Chris Comey uh, report here. And they haven't fulfilled their part of the bargain. How then do we pay them six million to go if indeed they have breached their cop? Yeah, because I have here, and it says the, auditor, or the auditor's report is also saying that, you know, there were so many uh, fraudulent deals going on, tax obligations not being honored, uh, companies that were being registered fraudulently, uh, you know, so, so why then did the Ghana government pay them again six million to go? Yes, um, that is the price we pay for not doing things right. And that is, so it's, it's very expensive. If, if you give out um, some critical aspects of your nation to be run by foreigners, and then when you don't ensure that you do the right thing, when it comes to sitting down to um, buy back, mm -hmm. you know, to discuss the buy back, they would ensure that they, they, you stick to a certain agreement. But by and large, I agree with you that if they went, actually, and they went against the joint venture agreement, mm -hmm. and, and for, for some of us, um, once um, the Malaysians, Pennant was able to even sell the majority shares to Boston in 2007 without recourse to the Ghanaian government, the majority shareholder, it is, it, for us, it's considered economic crime. Uh, for which they should have even suffered some punishment. Because even if you want to sell your, the majority share, this, the first offer should go to the, to the minority shareholder. And then the government and the country did not know about this, and they were able to, to, to sell it. Then on top of that, as we are, talking, as we are saying, mm -hmm. we, we have been able to pay even $6.36 million to them as a buyback. But sometimes the, the point we, you know, I think government also think, you know, try to think about um, not having some uh, arbitration problems with the Malaysian government. So on the basis of um, intergovernmental discussions, you know, a lot of things go on. You know, at the level of diplomacy, some th discussions go on that some of us may not be privy to. You know. So, um, so I, 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 I don't actually know what, what discussions might have gone on for us to agree that even though you went against the joint, joint venture agreement, well, and, and, it's here. and it then you, the, the party shall agree that the company shall rehabilitate the assets to be acquired pursuant to the SPA and complete the facility currently known as Tema Shipyard Dog. 
So they haven't facilitated it, they haven't currently uh, completed it. And then I go here, paragraph 20, it says, in addition, the leakage of the internal audit report for the uh, first quarter of 2009 issued on the 20th of April 2009, which contained serious allegations of corruption heightened uh, the already existing concern of the general public. You know, so uh, everything according to this report is telling us that they have completely, you know, flouted their side of the agreement. Uh, is there no way that the Malaysian government themselves will understand that, look, guys, you're messing up too much, come home safely? <laughs> that, that is why, it, for some of even though you say that uh, we are leading workers, but we, we think that had it not been the vigilance and the patriotism of the workers of a PSC Tama shipyard, mm -hmm. who for about 13 years or more struggled against the company, the Malaysians, on the basis of their corruption, on the basis of how they were looting this country, almost everybody was sitting there watching them. So today, if any discussions would have to go on about PSC Tama shipyard, we need to recognize that the workers have played a critical role in ensuring that the corruption had been exposed, in ensuring that um, PSC Tema Shipyard, um, what, what, what do you call it, um, works to the maximum of, of its potential. So just, we, we cannot ignore such, such critical role by, by the workers of PSC Tema Shipyard. I guess they'll be frustrated because if you read another paragraph here and it says the plant and machinery, uh, in the assets uh, document of the SPA and the GVA, there's evidence that almost all the plant and machinery at the advent of the diversity were in good and workable condition. Mm. Twelve years down the line, most of the machinery and the equipment at the shipyard were in very high state of disrepair. Uh, disrepair. Not only has the uh, majority shareholder failed to achieve the diversity of uh, objective to improve the management of the shipyard through enhancement of the shipyard's plant and machinery, but woefully neglected to maintain the shipyard at its pre-diversity standard. And at the end of it, get $6 million? Well, <laughs> well these, are, these are very good questions for, for, for those who sat down to, to engage in the discussion. But uh, some of us are not too surprised in the sense that um, we, we have... A weak institutional capacity. Oversight responsibilities sometimes, you know, uh, we call to question oversight mm -hmm. responsibilities, mm -hmm. you know. And then we also don't prepare ourselves well before we engage in some of these agreements. So we think that once the people have signed that they will do A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. they will do it. It took, as I said, as I already said, it took the vigilance of the workers of PSC Tema Shipyard to continuously engage in a struggle. And even when they were doing so, some people were just, who didn't understand, who didn't understand the, the issues, were saying that they were rabble rousers. So today, you can still understand why they are very, very you know, suspicious. Mm -hmm. They are very critical of any move that will um, create a condition where ship, shipyard would go back to into the hands of foreigners. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like a certain, you know, um, they're paranoid about it. The, and the, the, it's, the, it's a taboo mentioning um, foreign control of shipyard to the workers. Uh, according to the report, apart from South Africa and Europe, mm. there's, this is the only place where if a ship gets a puncture, you know, it can come and fix <laughs> for the puncture. Repairs. Uh, for repairs. <laughs> uh, so it's strategically placed. And from the report, it's, you know, it's like a, a certain gold mine. So why, why, is, why is it struggling? Is it because ships don't want to come here? Because we are a peaceful country. Uh, there's never a war here. We don't have pirates. So wh why, is this, why is this struggling? Uh, probably your guess may be as good as mine in, this, in a sense that we, as I've already said, we don't prepare ourselves well. We don't position ourselves to take advantage of, of opportunities. Because if you don't prepare yourself for opportunities, sometimes opportunities may occur, and because you have not prepared yourself, you cannot take advantage of it. Now, it is even more critical today. I, th I think that Nkrumah, when he was doing all these things, was thinking about today. Mm -hmm. Any group of people who do not think about tomorrow would always be caught up in the situation that we have today, you know, on hand. Mm -hmm. Now, 
just imagine that when the Malaysians had their day, um, messed up the place, the workers got involved in the struggle. Mm -hmm. And one of the good things that happened was when the government set up the what has become the Chris Akume Committee, which for which you are reading, yeah. you are reading from the report. And and I want to use this platform to say that the committee did a very good work. If we look at the, the quality of work, yeah. they were very, very clear about meticulous. about very meticulous mm -hmm. about what, what went wrong and also projected into the future as the future of uh, uh, PSC Thomas Shipyard. So the, the blueprint is already there. It's existing. And we, we think that if we want to find solutions uh, to PSC, the solutions have already been provided. But the, the way we do our things, in 2012, when the whole process of the buyback had been completed, I do not know whether when we were even negotiating the buyback we had in mind what we were going to do with the PSC Tema Shipyard. Because that's just, that, just yes, a buyback for, buy 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 for the sake of it. We, we have engaged in a buyback. I think 27 June 2012 or so, we have completed it. Now we are in full control of the place. For over one year, the place is there. No management structure, no board of directors, no governance structure. Anyway, in terms of what if government knows what they're going to do about let's watch this inset of what the uh, uh, Minister of uh, Transport is saying. Government has acquired the 60% shares of the Malaysians in the PSC Tema Shipyard. So this uh, uh, company is now wholly owned by, by Ghana. The shipyard will be expanded and upgraded into a modern facility. As part of the local content that is being worked on. The energy sector has signed an agreement to build a second FPSO. And as part of the local content requirement, a component of the FPSO is to be built in Ghana. They look around and identified the shipyard as a place that they can improve upon and build this um, component. They are to construct deck stools, which will start in October this year. Suction piles also are to be constructed. These are the two main things that are supposed to construct here. But for them to be able to do that, the shipyard is not in a position to handle such, such a construction work. So they've identified certain things that they have to do to enhance the shipyard so that they'll be able to meet the local content requirement. That is what we are doing. We are not handing over shipyard to Talu. They will be there for two years to do their work. When they finish, they will come back as clients to, to shipyard for whatever services they require from the shipyard. So I want to state categorically clear that government has not handed over shipyard to Talu, and that Talu's request is to meet the local content demand for building a component of the FPSO from the Tema shipyard. They are going to rehabilitate portions of the shipyard and also train the staff. Nobody is going to be laid off. No staff is going to be laid off. I want to assure those who are working at shipyard that they should rest assured that there's no layoff. They will be trained so that even if the contractor who is coming to build the component leaves, they will be able to do similar works subsequently. I'm, I'm aware we are implementing Chris Akume report. That is why we've taken the 60% from, from the Malaysians. You mentioned the Chris Akume report recommended that GPHA should manage the place. I, I, I don't remember anyway. The payment of GPHA is 6 million. It was <laughs> The government requested GPHA to pay about six point something million to pay off the Malaysians. The DG is here, he can confirm. There is no proposal from GPHA to man the shipyard. Whatever be the case, we'll go public and select the best. I'm not saying GPHA is not the best, but we haven't received any documents from GPHA that they want to man manage the shipyard.
Okay, we welcome back, but I think uh, somewhere in the report, uh, it says, I think it is true that GTPA is not directly involved in the ship repair industry, but it could be recalled that the shipyard and the GPHA use to be the same organization. We think that it would be a step in the right direction coming from the workers themselves. This, in our opinion, would bring the barest minimum any conflict or confrontation of workers uh, would have uh, with management other than one they proposed. So somehow the report is uh, re recommending. And then also I think uh, uh, GPHA paid for the money. I'm going to go for a quick break. When we come, uh, we'll try and get Chris Komi himself on the phone to also speak to this report and see which is the best way forward. Then we will look at the statement of what uh, government has uh, released. You know, uh, some of the paragraphs we need to look into it. You know, things like it says there is no arrangement with Talo Oil to take over parts of the PSO shipyard on build or plate, build operate and transfer, as published by the Daily Graphic. A <coughs> statement uh, signed by the Minister for Transport, uh, which is true because I mean I don't think Talo is a shipyard. But then I'll get the union guys to explain them further. So stay tuned. We come straight back. Hello and welcome back to the show. Uh, we are discussing uh, uh, the future of uh, Tema Shipyard as to whether when we bought it back from the uh, Malaysians, is it going to stay Ghanaian or are we going to sell it off to a different set of foreigners? The workers union there are saying no, we manage fine on our own and now that we've paid and bought it back, give it to us to run. Government seems to think that no. Let us give it to Talo. They have the money and they want to build components of the FPSO there so they would invest the money and build it. But there's so many uh, technicalities to this uh, issue. Now, the minister just said that he wasn't aware about any recommendation if uh, GPHA uh, was recommended to run this place. Now, according to the Chris Comey report, you know, I think this is paragraph 169. I'll start from 169. In terms of money, because I think the issue there was money, and they're saying the Ghana Ports and Harbour Authority, uh, Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, among others, have assets and financial capability to raise the needed capital. The view of the uh, next paragraph, 170, says the view of the workers of the shipyard is that the GPHA should take over the running and management of the shipyard. The committee is of the view that this proposal is worth considering. GPHA is the landlord of the shipyard, which has a big capital asset base and also uh, has the financial capacity to take over the assets of the shipyard and finance its uh, agent rehabilitation. So then it makes the argument that why then, you know, Talo, uh, you know, Mr. Union, I don't know if, if it's a question yeah. that you can answer. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I, I think that you have addressed a critical question. Um, for some of us, we think that Chris Akumi's committee mm -hmm. devoted um, about three or four paragraphs yeah. focusing on the future of shipyard and the focus in, the focus was on on premise on GPHA and what GPHA can do mm -hmm. there so I, I I think that is it, it is also not um, wholly um, true that the Pisakume report did not provide a certain way out uh, or, or as to the future of the of, of Tema shipyard for which GPHA was was in the center of this whole discussion um we think that the official response had always been that Talo is just coming there to create a fabrication platform. Mm -hmm. Talo is not interested in um, any equity stake um, in Tema Shipyard. And Talo is just operating on, this, on, on the basis of, uh, of, of the local content. Granted that this argument is true, yeah. we need to also know that if we have bought or we are in full control of PSC Tema Shipyard, the first thing is to put in place governance structures. 
you put in place a management, you put in place a board, and ensure that you have structures that can engage with other stakeholders. That is the first thing. We, it, is, it's, it, become, it comes as a, a big surprise that after over one year, when we haven't done all these things, then we are saying that somebody is coming there and that he, all that he's going to do is going to create a, uh, what do you call it, a fabrication uh, platform to, um, to fabricate um, some parts for uh, an F FPSO. Is that the, vision, the big vision that we have for um, Tema Shipyard? That, that, that's quite a small vision. And this could have, this, this, this can take place only when you have a certain control and management control in place there. I have uh, Chris Akumi on the line. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you and all the listeners. Thank you very much. We are discussing the uh, Tema Shipyard, and obviously you've done an extensive and impressive report about it. Now, your, your report seemed to be a bit conflicting with the press release that's come from the uh, Ministry of Transport. Uh, they want to release the uh, shipyard to uh, the Talo because they want to build a fabrication port or platform there, so they work with it. But in your, in your report, you also recommend a lot, which somehow the Ministry of Transport have missed, that, uh, you know, GAPHA can and in fact have worked on the, uh, the, the, the shipyard for a long time and that it should be released for them. Indeed, they've paid for it. But I don't know what your argument is now. Maybe then it was applicable, but now no. You can speak to that. Well, um, you were aware that, that by the circumstances which have led to uh, the takeover of the shipyard by uh, uh, of Ghana after we did the investigation and the commission sat down to look at the merits and the demerits of the takeover. And our recommendation was that uh, since the Malaysian counterpart, and that is uh, the Malaysian building and construction, uh, could not, you know, uh, rehabilitate the shipyard through, you know, funding in order to achieve the goals, the vision and the goals which were enshrined in the joint venture agreement. There was a need for a termination and a takeover. So initially, we recommended that we should take the majority shares of the 60% and then the Malaysians should go into the minority. But this created some kind of, uh, you know, uh, and, and misunderstanding, eventually the Ghana government took over. Our recommendation was that, you know, I mean, we actually recommended that uh, we should look for a strategic investor within Ghana. And then we recommended uh, Ghana Post and Harbor Authority and also uh, SNIT. Yeah, I mean those were the you know uh, the institutions that we or corporate bodies that we thought mm -hmm. would be in a very tall position to you know do investment and come up with the money, the the, the 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 rehabilitation and the completion of the refurbishment of the shipyard. So uh, that was a recommendation. But you and I know very well that. Even though the government accepted the committee's findings in its totality, I mean, it's left up to the government uh, at any time to do some massaging on the committee's findings as time, you know, goes on. You know, time changes. Mr. Okumi, let me, so, let me, Mr. Okumi, let me come in here. With your findings that clearly the Malaysians breached that side of their contract, how come we still had to pay them six million to go? They they damaged, you know, they could not even keep the machines that they came to meet, which were in working order according to your report. Uh, you know, they did not revamp the place as the contract was meant. That's the real main reason why we gave it to them to uplift the place. But even what they came to meet, they destroyed. Why did we still give them six million to go? You know, our job was to find out the extent to which, you know, the place could be rehabilitated 
to make the vision of uh, the late Osage folk, Tatakwan Nkuma, to make the ship here very viable and play that maritime role in the sub Sahara, you know, I mean, that, that is it. And that, to that extent, when we realized that Penang shipping could not make that kind of uh, investment, that was the agreement enshrined in the, uh, you know, the divestiture or the joint agreement. We thought there should be a takeover. Okay. But then, don't forget that they had made some kind of payment uh, to the Ghana government as their 60% share contribution to uh, the venture. So definitely, I mean, in all contracts, you know, agreement, when you are abrogating the contract, you must actually, you know, uh, appease the other party. Mr. Akube, but per, per, per your report, they had damaged the port from what they came to meet it. So whatever money they put in, they must have relinquished it by then. I mean, if I put in money and I revamp it, and the owner now wants it back, I can understand. But the machines that were already working after 12 years were in this disrepair, uh, repairable state. So uh, could you have recommended to the government that, listen, take these guys to court? Because even the audit report was showing too many uh, uh, you know, illegal and corruption and fabricated companies which were doing deals for them. Could you have recommended that, no, this... Uh, you know, the, what, for what's going on here, you, you must you, lose you, money. You know, you know something. Um, during the pendency of the agreement, mm -hmm. a lot of things went haywire under the Malaysia management, as the report actually uh, exposed. The Ghanaian, you know, management personnel there had that kind of a leeway, the free hand to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. Companies were formed within the shipyard and jobs were undertaken by individuals who had vested interest in the various companies. I mean, running into millions of dollars. Will you even believe that at some time, point in time, ships were being rehabilitated in deep sea? I mean, after the contract had been awarded to the shipyard, then Ghanaians were in management no takeover. There was even a time that a Ghanaian team up with a Malaysian manager, manager to form what they call Bone Shipyard, where they were, you know, even doing their own work. You understand? Mm -hmm. But uh, if you want to look at the totality of all these breaches in the agreement and to say that look, the Malaysians should go to hell or to go empty handed, mm -hmm. it would have created a, a legal, you know, tussle. Uh, and, you know, when such situations arise, there are, you know, courts of justice at the Hague and the required matters of such are, you know, handled. And then we think that would be worse off if it happens. Chris, move that it. we're just Chris. going to shove them off without, you know, a buyout. So that, that was the reason why we settled on a buyout. We look at the other part. Chris, Chris, and no. most especially, uh. that was a time when, you know, the Dana Malaysia diplomatic relationship was at its highest level. So that was the first weekend. You know, obviously, we look at the alternatives, especially the economic viabilities. And I thought that, you know, the situation as it is, if we took over, even in the state in which it was, and did the retooling, the proper investment. I mean, we could still capture the commanding heights in the maritime industry, most especially looking, taking into consideration the oil find. And we thought the shipyard could, you know, play a very vital role in the shipyard, in, in, in the oil find, through the training of personal repairs of, you know, uh, tap bowls, you know, uh, all those ship and the rest which play, uh, you know, role in it, in, in the oil fine. Chris, let so me, we, let me, we didn't actually see anything wrong in buying the Malaysians out because at the end of the day, 
we were going to be better off. Chris, let me, let, please, let me the fast. Potential. Chris, hold on. Let me, the potential. let me fast forward you to now we got 100%. But the best, the, the solution now is that why don't we give it back to Talo? They put in their money and everything. Uh, and then we t move in from there. Do, do you think the workers are right to be agitated or should they be jubilating that way? Hey, you know, that's Father Christmas. He's going to fix the place for us. Um, hmm. uh, I will be pushed to the wall with this kind of question. Uh, and I'm giving an answer. I don't want to give an answer which would be a recipe for uh, uh, to encourage or discourage whatever agitation there is. But then as a Ghanaian and uh, as a national of this country, mm -hmm. um, I still hold to that view, most especially the view which has been strongly expressed by the committee that, you know, uh, the shipyard can be best managed by Ghanaians, mm -hmm. you know, in order to, uh, Play that kind of role that is envisaged in you know the earlier uh, uh, joint agreement entered into with Pinash Pinyard. We thought I mean Ghanaians can play that role, especially looking at the efficiency of the Ghanaian management, the skill of the workers available, even doing the best, the cool with the, you know uh, the, all the handy handicaps available. The deficient tools and the rest. They were still working wonders. And, uh, you know, uh, bringing the necessary foreign exchange at that time. So we thought that, you know, Ghanaians are the best persons or Ghanaian institutions would be preferable mm -hmm. to any other corporate body. But then that is just a recommendation. You know, the, 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 uh, at the level of governance, it is a government of the day which takes a whole lot of, you know, things into consideration, look at the variables and make the determination of which way an issue should go. So that's all I can say. Okay, Chris, I'm going to push you again to the wall, but I'll read a statement, take a quick break, and then I'll come back, please. And yeah. uh, this is a statement released. It's a statement noted that under the stated agreement, uh, to be finalized with Talo, there would be no cost to government for the upgrading works. Talo will pay the shipyard for uh, the use of the facility to build the FPSO, out of which upgrading costs will be subtracted. And above all, jobs will be created and the, repaired ex uh, the required expertise needed to handle sh uh, shipyard works acquired and enhanced through the training exercise. So basically, they're bringing in the money free of charge, and then they'll come and use the place as a client. It sounds like free lunch, which is good news. I'll take a quick break and come back. Stay tuned. Okay. Okay. Hello, welcome back. Uh, we're discussing the situation of... Uh, it's a nation's asset, and it's very strategically placed. There's a, a ship dry dock, basically where ships will come and have their servicing done. All the way down South Africa and all the way to Europe, there's nothing in the middle other than here. So it's just like a service stop, basically, for ships. So we really, really strategically placed and a good advantage. And as a nation's asset, you know, we are asking, should we keep it and manage it ourselves so that the investment stays inland? Or do we give it to big multinationals and get a percentage out of it? The, you know, some, there's two school of thought. Some say keep it in house. Uh, Chris Kumi report, who did a yeah, Kumi report, which is a very extensive report, is saying, listen, when Ghanaians were managing it, they did well. So we've given it to Malaysians. They've run it down. They failed. Just give it back to Ghanaians to do it. Ministry of Transport seems to think that no, uh, Talo is offering a free lunch. They're going to come fix the place, pay for everything. Government is not going to pay any, any money at all. They then come in as a client. Now, my question is, are they coming in as a bait so that, oh, we're only going to take this platform and then the next thing you know, you're taking the whole lot. Again, are they going to go and siphon some oil at the back and say, look, I'm going to take three barrels instead of two barrels to pay for the money I used on there. I mean, uh, have I still got Chris on the line? 
Hello. Hello. Yes, Chris, these are some of the questions that we are jawing as to whether, you know, this is a platform to take over the okay. whole place. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it's, it, it's, there's nothing wrong to get agitated uh, about those kind of questions that you are raising as a, a Ghanaian national because uh, if that happens, the shipyard might be at the heart of any Ghanaian who is so firm about the vital role that the shipyard is expected to play in the economy of this country. So there's nothing wrong. Mm. Uh, but then, uh, Tolo company, I mean, you know, is, uh, you know, into oil. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I mean, they, they will be using, uh, you know, all sorts of equipment as uh, with, you know, dry dog repairs, drug dog uh, management, and that sort of thing. Um, if they want to have these things done, you know, Abidjan is close, but then the dog there is not quite uh, efficient to handle uh, whatever repairs or whatever uh, maintenance they will need on their rigs and that sort of thing. Now, the next place is South Africa, mm -hmm. which is quite very far away. So, you know, then we'll now be talking about uh, Western Europe and the rest. So, closer by is this strategic investment we are calling the Marshipiad. Well, I mean, to, my, to me, uh, I don't see anything wrong with this arrangement because uh, I don't think it is a free lunch, a free lunch because whichever way it goes, it's going to bring economic benefits to both parties. That will benefit to, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, maximizing of the, oh, sorry, minimizing of the cost of repairs of these badges, you know, the ships and the tugboats and that sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's not going to cost them so much that it will cost them if they have their tackles and the rest, you know, badges repaired in Europe, Western Europe, or in South Africa. As against, if they make investment, if they return, you know, shipyard, Chris, have, let, Chris, please, I know, have, I'm, I'm running, have, Chris, I'm running out of time, so let me just come back. We've been beaten once before. Uh, should we try our, our luck on this one, or should we say, look, it's enough, enough it's enough, it's enough? Because I, I, the, because I, I, the deal is almost the same as the, the Malaysia makers, deal. I should think that. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. Let but me I should think that the oh. policy makers mm -hmm. have taken all this into consideration before coming up to this position. I mean, so let's just respect their, you know, uh, well, I'm sure, I'm sure it will be a dialogue. We won't fight or kill anybody, but it will be a dialogue. But, uh, Daniel, I think your union workers may be justified uh, in terms of the agitation because they've been beaten once before and it was the same deal. We are coming in with money. We're bringing equipment, SPSD, technicians, everything, and they left with nothing. Even what the workers had and working with already, they ruined. So, uh, you know, what's the way forward? Yeah, I, I, I think that... Um why do you want to do all this um, within a management vacuum? You, you have no structures in place at, at PSE Tama Shipyard. You don't have a board, you don't have a, um, a full management to, to ensure that you have short, medium, long-term plans for the place. And then you are doing this. Even before anybody takes over, whether GPH or whatever, you are leasing out some facility. So what about if the new management comes in and says that, look, where you have this facility, probably we also, had, we also have a, a long-term vision for the place. So our, our um, concern has been that, why don't you put in place a management structure that can get involved in all these discussions? The next point is also, also that the um, Tema Shipyard has a big, bigger vision than just fabrication for F FPSO. There's a bigger vision for the place. You know, so we, we, we are of the opinion that we need to put in place a management um, structure. Mm -hmm. And whether we like it or not, I'm happy 
that Chris Akume actually confirmed that they had made recommendations that GPHA can run the place. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I don't. I don't want to contest whatever anybody is saying, any politician is saying. But it is clear that Chris Akume report has a, is a blueprint for what happened in the past and what will happen in the future. And we are of the opinion that we will push Ghana's agenda through GPHA. We also know that in this country, people see uh, PSC Tema Shipyard as a gold mine. And once people think it's a gold mine, there will be interest. Um, conflicting interests and people struggling for, for personal interests. We are pushing national agenda. We want Ghana to benefit. We don't have to make a second mistake in this kind of, of business. Daniba, you need to assure Ghanaians that once it's handed over back to Ghana, we won't go through the uh, proverbial, we are running it down, we are you know, you know, doing underhand deals. So put some structures in place to make sure that once it gives back to you, it will be properly managed. The, the interesting thing is that when you go to shipyard, the workers are very, very, um, should I say, very vigilant. Mm -hmm. I was very happy when Chris Akume paid going tribute to them. That even in the face of all the difficulties, when they had no tools to work with, they still managed to work. And this is a, very, a highly motivated and nationalistic you know, workforce who will not sit down for anybody to come in and run the place down and, and take them for granted. And that, that's one I know, I know for sure. They've gone through all manner of problems, and they will continue to be vigilant and ensure that the right thing is done and the nation first. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me let the US know that we try to contact Ministry of Transport, but they won't speak or they won't come on the show. Uh, but we spoke to Chris Akumi, who did the expense extensive report, and uh, we're speaking to uh, Daniel Uzukrant, who's the General Secretary, Maritime and Dock Workers Union. If I got Chris on the line, thank you very much. I am very grateful, but I just want to say that, you see, the government cannot be wrong. The workers cannot be totally wrong. I think what we need to do now is to look at the views, viewpoints or the standpoints of the two parties, the workers, and see how first we can forge a marriage to, you know, keep the ship going in the interest of Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You've been watching PM Express. My name is Nanan Sakwa. But before I go, just to quickly let you know that if you know anybody who... Uh, it's a bright but needy child and needs to go to school. Not one that goes to a private school. Multimedia is uh, doing a corporate social responsibility. So email this boy or girl's detail to educare at, ed, uh, at myjoyonline.com. And who knows, maybe your fortunes might change. Tomorrow, we're back here to do it all over again. Thanks for watching.